Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. Women in the Arts Foundation was founded in the early 70s to battle the discrimination women artists faced. Today, it helps women navigate the art marketplace and continues to offer them the opportunity to exhibit their work in all kinds of venues. My guests are three members, Marie Shepes, Helene Soller, and Erin Butler, and they've just finished curating their current show. So welcome, all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It, you know, though there have been many changes since the 70s in the art world, right? Yeah. Yes. But it's still, you know, every aspect of it, from the first recognition of a woman painter down to selling your artwork, there's still not parity with men, That's right? That's right, no. yes. So tell me, how, is that basically the reason that you find women at this group so helpful? I think it's, um, it's really more because of the, of the sort of the camaraderie and the, um, the action of, of continuing to exhibit our work mm. as a group. I think that has more of resonance with so the membership. So there's still something about sisterhood. Yeah, I yes. think right. so. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. the main sort reason of, most uh, people It's stay. also a, a method of uh, networking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. opening up opportunities for our art. But know, just the fact our, that you uh, have this means that it's still difficult for an individual, although I guess it's the same for male artists also, yes, for an indi so. I individual to break in. Yes, I think that's thing. difficult for everybody. For everybody. At, at this but it's a little more difficult, isn't it, for artists or maybe for older women artists? Is that it? Do you yeah. find younger women are more aggressive? Mm -hmm. have, they've taken advantage of all the years that you guys have Right, really and, and, there, and, and the also work. it's just that, you know, the art world is a, is a kind of a youngish world. It, it's very it's ageist, not, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so the, yeah. The, the sort of the attraction of a younger person, just the whole being of a well, younger person it, has a little more... It, it carries farther, and when you get older, you, you, they tend to s sort of forget, it, you know, ignore you a little bit more and stuff. So even though I think older people have more experience and more ability of, of just talking to people, being around, um, more knowledge in that sense, mm. that we don't have quite that same, uh, we don't, we don't we're, we're still carrying the difficulty part more than the younger generation mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. and, and that, I guess, and that we've said that's true also for the men. Yes, I think that's yeah. true but for it, the But men it's too. harder in a way because when you start, and especially those of us who are not, you know, in their 20s now, <laughs> from the 70s, if you didn't break in then, right. then chances are, except I guess for Grandma Moses, I forget what her real <laughs> name was, that it's yeah. hard to break into the market. Yeah. I well, think it's, it's, it, it's really interesting because when, when we were young, they told us, you know, like women artists didn't make it till they were 80. And, <laughs> and then when we got a little closer, closer to, to 80, <laughs> it became now the younger generation is the one. Yeah. So we sort of got a little bit skipped in the, you know, we were sort of caught in the middle. Yeah. But we yeah. still are showing our work. So. I was really taken with it. some comment I read someplace. Um, Georgia O'Keeffe, she said uh, that the men say to her, this was way back, you're a really good painter for a woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We got she that all said that, but I yes. felt. I was a great <laughs> painter, period, right? Yeah, so it's exactly. always been that. Yeah. That was hard. That's for yeah. sure. And uh, today also the younger generation uh, has a network built in uh, through their graduate school. I think that's mm -hmm. a little more savvy. They're uh, more attuned to the business of art as well as art making. And you know the so, majority of graduate students in fine arts, Yes, it's like 52% of them are women. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So you're, you're, that's interesting that they start, but they've already got a... Oh, because a uh, they're uh, sort of, uh, the gallery system is feeding from those schools uh, and seek them out. So uh, there's a smooth uh, transition in many cases. But you studied it's in the graduate work. In no, the no, I oh, uh, no. was in a commercial art. Right. I studied commercial art, mm -hmm. but I always kept up my fine art. And uh, through uh, networking and uh, getting my work out, and through Women in the Arts, actually, was very mm -hmm. instrumental in uh, having me realize my career as a fine artist. So you are, you're in the marketplace? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's really, and Erin, uh, um, when, 
Did you do graduate work? No. Yeah. No, I, I have um, a, two associate degrees, one in liberal arts and one in commercial art, and then I went to the Art Students League for a long time. Yeah. So that's no degree. So I'm, I'm extremely um, educated in the arts without having any kind of fancy degree at all. <laughs> I have a lot of studio art classes that I've taken, and I also have the associate degree that I earned from Kingsborough Community College ab about 10 years ago. Yeah. Is it important for an artist to exhibit their work in a show? I think so, yeah. Yes. It, what, what, what does that mean? You like other people to see your work? It, it, it's like sort of, yeah, line. it's <laughs> kind of a combination of liking other people see your work, part of it being ne necessary for other people to see your work if you want to get anywhere and with your work. And what does mean getting somewhere? What does that mean? Well, if you want to sell anything or if you want people, other, you know, other thing, anyone to recognize it, you have to have it out there. And, um, and you also, and part of it is just your, for your own self, just to see it on the wall in a different place, in a public place, mm -hmm. gives it a whole different. Uh, it, you look at it differently when you have. Well, it's it out also there. gaining credentials. In other words, that are recognized in the art field. If you've exhibited in museums and galleries and uh, various shows, that add prestige and uh, a cachet to your work. Do you? Love it when your painting is hanging on the wall? I do. You do? Yeah. I yeah. feel like a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific. It really is. Yeah. Now, you're, you have a show that's really opening at the beginning of January, and it's going through to the end of February? Yes. Uh -huh. And it's at the public library? The, the Riverside, Riverside Library. Which is near there. Six yeah, it's right across the street. Right. Yeah. It's, so how do you mount a show? Uh, well, we... we we put a call for the artists among our membership, and we also accept outside uh, artists if they join the organization. Um, then we curate what you know the work, or, or we put a theme. Usually, we don't always have a theme. Sometimes we do. Uh, this one has a theme, and it's um, it's a little bit because it's a library and wanted a little bit of an educational focus. Which, so it's kind of a uh, how art connects to geometry. So the title is Doing the Math, um, Artists Reframe Geometry. And it's just, uh, the challenge was to sort of re really actively consider how you use geometric form or, or just composition within your work and, and approach the work from that point of view. Most of the people already had work that worked within that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's you know, the basis it kind for of our compositions, actually. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's the underpinning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it was interesting because uh, some of the artists really protested the idea. They said, no, our work is very free-flowing. It's very related to nature. So I, I stuck to my guns, and, and I got some of the best work from those people. That's interesting. So, yeah. so people mm -hmm. paint, some people paint specially for the show and other people? No, I think everybody had paint. their work, they but they work. just reconsidered their work in a new light, something they'd done, but hadn't thought about it in that sense. How did you decide what the theme was going to be? I'm not sure. I ca it came to me at one point, and I, you and decided. I stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote it down, and I said, okay, that might work. <laughs> and I saw that there'd been other shows. Lowry Sims curated a show called The Persistence of Geometry that traveled a couple, I think, to the Cleveland Museum or something, and there was a little catalog, and I said, oh, wow. Um, so, you know, other You're people business, do it. Right? Yeah, so I'm going to go for it. And so do you, you don't jury, it's not a jury selection, is it, or is it? It's, oh, it's not jury. you get more paintings than you exhibit? No, I, I accepted everything. You accepted uh, but it. I, I chose the work that yeah. I had people select, m send me more work. I see. But I, I didn't see. leave any artists out. Artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's part of our philosophy, that we include everyone and we don't discriminate. We don't really have a jurying system. To but we curate the show to uh, get the best possible work. Uh, explaining the themes from each person. Yeah, from yeah. each yeah. person. So, have who's been with the, the women in the arts longest? Have you? I think uh, I have. I joined in '76. Uh, so, no, I yeah. actually I joined in '77. 
Right. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't haven't joined until the 90s. That's so, yeah, that's interesting. So, so you were young artists. Yes. And mm -hmm. it was hard. Yeah, well. Yeah. I don't know how hard it, it was. I was still in school and when I first heard about it and I was just, you know, very ambitious as all young artists are. <laughs> and I, I remember um, in my class was taught by Knox Martin and Rosemary Cove was a his friend and she came into the, to the class and said, I'm in this show in the Brooklyn Museum with a lot of women. And I said, okay, where do I join? <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. So, yeah, and I loved her work. She's a wonderful yeah. sculptor. And what was it like in those days? It was... Um, women. Oh, the, the, the women in the arts was, yeah. was just absolutely wild. We had a big loft. The, the meetings were loud. There'd be two or 300 people in there. It was very exciting. It was and it, really was, and it was exciting because you really had a blank wall that you were trying to right. yeah. I guess, break through a brick wall. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the women that formed the organization in 1971 actually had, they were the ones that knew the real struggle of how bad it was in 1971. Um, by 75, when I joined, I think it was, or 76, it was already starting to, we had so much sisterhood that there was action going on. So it, we knew it was difficult, but it wasn't the same thing as those people who yeah, had the been, endured the 50s and 60s. Right. Miriam Shapiro, and, I remember. Yes, yes. and I think, uh, yeah. I think Elaine de Kooning was at our first yeah. meeting. Um, yeah. It was a group of probably 20 people. Yeah. And they said they got so mad by the end of the meeting, they were all ready to divorce <laughs> their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> I know that but Lee Krasner said something. There's another one who said, uh, they said something about, I'm pretty good for a woman. And I mean, that was the way they said it. Yes, yes. and, and right. it, was, it was like laughed at when people talked about women. You know, mm -hmm. you'd say, okay, are there, all the liberation movements were happening. Mm -hmm. But when you talked about women, everybody went, oh, yeah, right. You know, and yeah. they laughed. It yeah. was still, yeah. it was still yeah. not, you know, so that's why the women's You movement, picketed so the Whitney, Whitney and, and the and and his, Yes, mm -hmm. uh, based on some of their uh, biannual shows and everything. And we did statistics as to how many women were represented like 80 men and uh, three women and things like that. <laughs> and uh, these were big international shows. And uh, we also did statistics on how many women were in the stables of major art galleries. Mm. And that, that was, was really That was grim. really bad. Yeah. That, was, that no, was very That was grim. a reality yeah. check. <laughs> now, you just joined about 15 years ago. Yes. So how did that happen? I, I uh, met a woman at one of the openings who was a member. And she was telling me about it. So I said, it sounds nice. So I joined. <laughs> so. But you'd been painting before. Oh, yes. I've been painting since the 70s, since and, I was a, And were you 20s. frustrated with how you could show your work? Yes. Well, it, w it was pretty difficult yeah. to get out there. It's hard work, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you, yes, have, it to, is. it is you have to, if you want to have your painting hung in a show, you have to find out about the shows to begin with. Yeah, right, right. right. You yeah. have to be, like somebody asked either if it's an invitational, they have to know your work. Yeah. And know and to invite We have you. to prepare the if work and yeah. uh, send it and fill out applications and make art Rejected statements 55, uh, as to <laughs> how this uh, <laughs> what fits into their vision of what the exhibit is all about. Yeah. And then we send it out and we wait yeah. <laughs> to see if yeah. we're accepted. So these are, I mean, serious artists. Mm -hmm. I think to be a serious artist or to be a serious artist in any of the arts, you have to have a certain persistence and drive. Definitely. Yes. And belief in your own work, yes. right? Yes. That's yeah. what propels you. Yeah. Other people can paint nicely, but... Yeah. They're busy doing something else. Yeah. Well, I think I think with um, with a lot of us, it's kind of a survival thing. We sometimes lay low for a little while just to feel better. <laughs> Recoup. <right? laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and then we start again. Yeah. Yeah, but now, it, it's also a learned. It's part of us. Yeah. It's not right. something that we could live without. Yeah. And it's an ongoing process of developing your work and getting it out there and uh, networking, and it's work, but it's something that we have to do, and uh, it's a focus of our lives. It's like a thread. That's do you work through. every day? Uh, almost every day. I, I don't work consistently 
every day because of other things that are going on. But it, it's either, uh, you know, preparing things to get out there or actually physically doing the work. And thinking about what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh -huh. that's an ongoing thing mm -hmm. because we're always looking and thinking. Drawing. And mm -hmm. uh, sketching and yeah. uh, You work every day? No, but uh, a few times a week I do. And I'm also a mixed media artist. And what I find in my travels around, this, around the city also helped me, gives me ideas of, of uh, future paintings and things like that. There, um, will there be somebody to come, a reviewer, a writer review about this show? I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Uh, do you any... try to do that, get somebody from Oh, yeah, we send press releases. We send press releases. Um, it's very attention? hard to get reviewed. Yes, it's, very, very it's hard. It's not like the it's old not, days when yeah. we used to send in a press release and at least we'd get a mention yeah. Right. Uh, under exhibits yeah. in the, every newspaper. And you don't, and you don't get that. No, anymore. no. I think it's fewer just... people actually cover these things now, for the, which is part of the problem. Mm. Um, and it's just, there's so, a lot out there demanding attention, so it is very hard. And there's very, still, always been hard. There's it's still difficult. fewer reviews for women than there are for men anyway. I think mm -hmm. so. I mean, yeah. there are statistics yeah. that show that. Yeah. Yeah. What interests me is all the, all the statistics, because mm -hmm. even though women are achieving more prominence mm -hmm. and success, it's not that many women, you know, no. I mean, still. Oh, well, right. we yeah. were talking about yeah, that. So the, top the ones careers. that are up there are very few, yeah. that's true. Right. Yeah. And then the that's price, I mean, Georgia O'Keeffe is certainly considered a very important American painter. And she recent, they recently sold at auction one of her paintings for $44 million. Oh, OK. But Picasso. They sold for something like $170 million. Mm -hmm. yes. So it shows you crazy. the difference. Yeah. And the $44 million was the highest amount any woman painter has oh, sold really? work for. Oh, wow. wow. And if you look at the top 10, see, I did a lot of work for this program. Yes. If you look at the top 10 paid amounts of money that a, a, a work of art at an auction brought in, mm -hmm. the 10th person still made more than George O'Keefe. Wow. Oh, so it's wow, really kind is. of, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's also reflected because I read there was a study that uh, if at one time they went through MoMA, the Museum of Modern mm -hmm. Art, and what was it, 7% of the work being displayed was by women artists? Yeah, yeah. Believe and at that, the Met, 4%? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you it's, know, you've still got it. Yeah, it's still very, uh, in the museum world, it's still very hard. Yeah. And I think uh, we have a member that was one of our earliest members in, here in New York, and she moved out to California many years ago. And so she, at some point, rejoined us. And she uh, runs, just started a group called the Bay Area uh, Women's Legacy Project, I believe. And so there's a few artists there She's the only member of Women in the mm -hmm. Arts. But she started this group of Bay Area women who are seeking to get their work, uh, like, as a legacy um, into several yes. museums and well, That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So she said it's, they really are just trying to make people aware that unless you include women and, and not even the most famous women, you aren't showing, you aren't going to carry the picture, the true picture of oh, our culture. Now, you know, yeah. you're going to carry forward a picture of art as it really doesn't reflect our world. And the history. And the history, yeah. it's, exactly. It, it's, and it's similar to history, right? It really is. History has yeah. well, traditionally sure. ignored mm -hmm. women. Yes. The Gorilla Girls, their famous yeah. speech, and their, uh, does a woman have to be naked to get into the Metropolitan? Right. It was an <laughs> enormous thing about had 4% of the paintings are or 7% of the paintings are w of women in something like, what, 75%? I don't know. But are all yeah. very of, yeah. of, of, <laughs> of naked women. Women naked, <laughs> right? The Gorilla but, Girls uh, are fascinating. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, I love they're, seeing their posters and their sayings. They're the ones who had a glass of water half filled, was less than half filled because it came to 32%. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's the number of women represented by a gallery mm. in New York or Los Angeles. Yeah, well, uh, uh, we ha I was very... Uh, Pleased to see that there were some major women artists represented this season mm -hmm. in Manhattan. Audrey Flack, mm -hmm. Susan, uh, Susan uh, uh, Bernstein, and 
I forget who else, uh, oh, uh, downtown in the uh, Gray Gallery. The, um, I'm not sure what show you're talking about. Yeah, she, she was. Uh, Audrey was the guest on this program. Oh, she's because I went. To, I told you I went to high school. She's busy mm. playing the banjo. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> giving concerts. I think she was a member of Women in the Arts. Oh, I'm sure on. she was. Yeah, yeah I'm yes. sure. I think. I mean, it, Women in the Arts was a national group. At yes, it was. Yeah. It, it still actually is. We're yeah. smaller, but we have uh, yeah. uh, some people in Nashville. I mean, in Nashville, in um, North Carolina, in Asheville, North mm. Carolina. So some of the younger women artists don't seem to have the same need for the the support. I think and it's more. I think they do. It? I really think they do. But I think it's. I, I just think it's an comfort with age, you know, that, that they feel comfortable around their own age group more. I'm not sure. Uh, we really would like to have some younger members because we want to carry the work on and we're running out of, you know, we want to sort of focus on our own thing a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And, um, and so we do need to have some younger members. And I think it's difficult because we do have a lot of older members. It's sort of difficult to bridge that age gap which I didn't find when I was younger and went to the Art Students League. I had a lot of older friends, younger friends, mm -hmm. every, every age. But it seems a little more difficult now it's interesting. to have that. I think the, the um, AIR gallery has been very successful mm -hmm. with now, Nancy a, Azera and some of the, right. the people from the, that used to run the That's a gallery that Institute. was started by but, women. Artists. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. also uh, located in Brooklyn, which yeah. is a hub of uh, so, youth. Yeah, so I wonder <laughs> but if then young another people go one, there. And Nancy, actually, Nancy Azera is with Soho 20 now, and she, she's uh, there in, in, in Bushwick. Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of them have been successful because they have actual galleries with staff, mm -hmm. their co-ops, so they can have she's, a staff. Um, they actually have been pretty active with a scholarship program to bring younger women in. So we, we are not in that position to do that. Yeah. But She struggled. I mean, I knew her years mm -hmm. ago with the Feminist Art Institute. And that was an interesting thing because not only were they talking about the work of women, but weren't they talking about the subjects of what women themselves? Yes. Yeah. 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 The you work know, was more the fem. What the we were fem going what I call the body, yeah. the body art. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and part of that was George O'Keefe and stuff and things like that. The interpretation of her work sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you also have a newsletter. Yes, and we've been publishing it since 1975. Mm -hmm. And what comes in the newsletter? Uh, it's uh, we usually have a, we have a cover artist that's done by lottery and like all of our stuff we do <laughs> <laughs> we try to do it in the in most democratic way possible. Um, it's hard the, though. Um, you can't be totally no, no, egalitarian, yeah. right? Well, no. we do because we again put names in the hat yeah. and they right. pick. <laughs> pick and I remember out. working. At Ms. Magazine, at the beginning, it was everybody does everything. Right. It fell apart it eventually. Happen. It no. doesn't work. That Somebody well. has to get stuck yeah. doing a lot yeah. of the like yeah. activating right. of things. So, what is in the newsletter? It's uh, well, there's a lot of listings of everyone's shows and okay. activities. We have a lot. We have some members who also do are you know actors and singers and mm -hmm. performers. So whatever art arts they're involved with. Um, so we have a lot of those listings. We have usually two or three members will write a, a story, an article on something. There, you know, it, it changes every time. So, so what um, if? I'm sorry to interrupt. You. We're getting near the end. What is it that you you have found really an enormous satisfaction out of this? Right. Yes, I have. Yeah. So was the subject of the exhibit chosen because of the library? Or did the library take it because of the subject, or is the library just interested in the exhibition? We showed there before. Helene curated the last show there. Yeah. Um, and, and then she proposed that we have another exhibition there. And based on that show, they said yes without okay. knowing what we were okay. going to do. So now, it, where is it again? Let's tell everybody. At the Riverside Library. It's on it's 127 yes. Amsterdam, Amsterdam Avenue. At six, between 65th and 66th Street, and you mm -hmm. and they and are actively running a gallery there. Every, yeah. They have a show, a different show every. I night. have an upcoming solo show in June oh, at good. the library space. Oh, that's great. So your website is wiaf.org. 
And on there, you also have the exhibit and everything for people to go with the hours. And I hope so, yeah. I'm I think you have to go tonight <laughs> and check. Yes, <laughs> How many pieces, when you hung them yesterday, how many pieces? About uh, 27. 24 pieces. 24, 24 mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope people come. Thank I you. wish Thank you, you all <laughs> the luck. Do you, any of you have daughters who are artists? Yes, I do. You do? My daughter is a graphic designer. Uh huh. And so that's uh, she went to Music and Art. Great. So, so she's got a good foundation. <laughs> uh, working in Manhattan. Uh -huh. Good for her. Well, I thank you very much. I wish you so much luck in the, in the future and, uh, and so much admiration for the work and the energy and the leadership that you've exhibited. Well, thank you. Thank and you. thank you so much for inviting us. <laughs> oh, yes. We thank really you. So much. Really, it's very thank great. you. If there are any people you'd like to hear or topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.